Hey guys, welcome. This is a Unity tutorial on how to build a Total War style RTS camera. Before I get into it, I want to offer an alternative video. Game Dev Guy made a great video on how to build an orbiting strategy camera rather than a first person style Total War camera. So if you want that kind of style of camera, go check out his video. But anyways, as you can see with this little demo here, the camera is parented to the lead unit. We don't want that. We want a free floating camera where we can explore the map and have a nice tactical overview. So first things first, go to your camera object and create a script called camera movement script or something like that. It doesn't really matter what you name it. So once you've made that script, go inside and we're gonna make three different variables. We've got speed, zoom speed, and rotation speed. Speed is gonna be how fast we can move the camera back and forth across the map. Zoom speed is how fast we can scroll up and down. And rotation speed is how fast the camera can uh, spin around on its axes. The next things you're gonna to wanna to add are max height and min height. And this controls how high or low the camera can go. And so to figure out these limits, what I do is I pull up the editor and I just move my camera to the highest point that looks good and the lowest point that looks good. And then I'll use those to set how high and low I want the camera to go. So it looks like our lower limit is gonna be four and our upper limit is gonna be 40. All right, so now it's time to start moving the camera. So we're gonna create a horizontal movement variable called HSP and that's gonna be equal to speed times input .get axis. Uh, horizontal. The nice thing about using input.getAxis is that it checks WASD and the arrow keys at the same time. Now we're going to do the same thing but for our vertical speed. So we do float VSP equals speed times input.getAxis. Instead of doing horizontal, this time we're going to do vertical. And finally we have our scroll which is float scroll SP and we're going to set that equal to the negative zoom speed value times input.getAxis uh, scroll wheel. Next, we're gonna create vectors for movement in each direction. So create a vector three and call it vertical move and set that equal to new vector three. Set the Y value to scroll SP and everything else to zero. This will be all of our movement in the Y axis. Next up is our left and right movement. So create a new vector three called lateral move. And this is gonna be equal to HSP times transform.right. And the reason for this is that we want to move sideways based on the direction that the camera is facing, not moving left and right based in world space. Finally, our last vector three is gonna be called forward move. Because our camera is angled down, if we just use the regular transform.forward, it's going to push us into the ground whenever we try to move forward. So we have to do something called vector projection. For those who don't know what vector projection is, it's not necessary to follow along here, but if you wanna kind of try to conceptualize it, think of it as a vector projecting its shadow onto something else. Basically what we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna be taking out the horizontal component of that downward pointing vector and then stretching out its magnitude to the magnitude that the original vector had. So that way we don't move down, we just move forward and we still move forward with the same speed. So we do this by setting our Y component to zero. So that way we're not moving down anymore. So now we've pretty much extracted a vector that only exists in the X to Z plane. And now what we're going to do is we're going to normalize it, which is to say to set its magnitude equal to one. Now to change its magnitude from one to our VSP, all we have to do is multiply it by VSP. So now now that we have all three of our different movement vectors, we're gonna add them all together into one vector three that we call move. And every single update, we will add this move vector to our transform.position. I forgot to mention that we need to set our speed uh, variables, so go ahead and do that now. I'm using these values because I've already done this once before and I know what works, but depending on the scale of your game, these values might be different. Okay, one last thing, I forgot to capitalize the W and mouse scroll wheel, so go ahead and do that now. So now if we go into the game and play, we'll see that our camera actually moves around and we can adjust the height, although something's a little bit off. It's moving really, really slowly. And that's because we forgot to adjust our movement speed based on our height. We want to move faster the higher up we are, so that way we can traverse the map more quickly when we're zoomed out. But first we're going to implement a fast mode, where by holding shift you can zoom out and pan around the map more quickly. We're going to go in here and add an if statement that checks if the left shift key is pressed, and then we'll update the speeds accordingly. Now, if the shift key is not pressed, we're going to say that the speed values are equal to half of their normal value. Now if we go back into the game and play, we'll see that when holding shift we can move around the map a lot faster, although it's still pretty slow, so we need to start adjusting our speed based on our height. So when we're setting our HSP and VSP variables, we're going to multiply them by transform.position.y, and this will make it so that when we're zoomed out further, we're actually moving further, which makes more sense. 
So now we go back into Unity and we hit play and we'll see that our camera is now moving along at a much fast, oops, almost too fast of a speed. We want our scroll speed to still be increased the higher up we get, but right now it increases exponentially. So we're gonna put mathf.log on top of it, which hopefully should make our zoom out speed scale linearly rather than just blasting us off into space. This gives us a lot better control over our zooming function, but we're able to clip under the map, so we need to limit our height somehow. So we're just gonna have a simple if statement that checks if we're above or below our min and max heights and sets our speed to zero if we are. Now our height is bounded by that max and min value, but you'll see that if we scroll quickly enough, we can actually still clip through the ground. So we need to implement another system that checks what our position will be and then clamps our height according. Put in an if statement that says, if our current height plus scroll speed is greater than our max height, then we set our current height equal to the max height. That way we're not able to overshoot it, no matter how fast we're going. Next, we do the same thing for min height. Make sure that we're not about to go below the min height, and if we are about to go below the min height, just set our position equal to the min height. Now if we go back into Unity and test this out, we'll see that no matter how fast we're scrolling, the game will always lock our height to either 4 or 40 if we're about to go out of bounds. Our last step is to add some rotation to the camera, so add two vector2 two variables. One is going to be called p1 and the other is going to be called p2. These will both hold the position of our mouse as we rotate the camera around. Also, don't forget to initialize rotate speed. I kept my value pretty low for mine. So now we're going to create a function that takes in no arguments and returns void, and we're going to call it get camera rotation. The first thing we're going to do is check if the middle mouse button was pressed down. This only returns true for the frame that the middle mouse button was actually pressed. We want the position where the mouse was when the middle mouse button was pressed, so we do p1 equals input.mouseposition. The next thing we want to do is check if our middle mouse button is currently being held. Now this will return true for every single frame that the mouse button is being held down. Now we set p2 to the mouse position at this frame. And now since we have our start and end points for our mouse, we can tell how far the mouse moved in between the last two frames. Now we create a new float called dx, and we set that equal to p2 minus p1.x times rotation speed. Now we repeat this step, except we call it dy, and we set it equal to p2 minus p1.y times rotation speed again. These variables tell us how far the mouse has moved since the last frame, and it scales it by our rotation speed. All that's left to do is update the rotation of our camera, so we do transform.rotation multiplied by quaternion.euler, and inside of that .euler function we create a new vector 3, which has all zeros except for the y component, which we set equal to dx. So now as we move our mouse left and right while holding down the scroll wheel, our camera should move left and right accordingly along the y-axis. I almost forgot, for this to work we need to put our get camera rotation function at the end of update. If we go back into Unity, we'll see that our camera isn't exactly working the way that we want it to. This is because our camera is tilted, so our y-axis isn't the same as the global y-axis. It's actually tilted forward a little bit. To solve this issue, we create a new empty game object and call it camera parent. What we're going to do is we're going to parent the camera to this object. This object will rotate around the global y-axis, while the child camera inside is tilted down at an angle, and we control that on a different set of axes. So remove the camera movement script from the child camera and attach it to the parent camera. Make sure that the transform of the child is set to zero, and then run the game. You'll see now that we now can rotate the camera along the y-axis just the way that we wanted in the first place. The last thing we want to do is add a feature so that we can tilt the camera up and down. This is controlled by rotating the x-axis of the child object. We get the child object by doing transform.getChild0. GetChild normally returns the children based on a hierarchy, but since there's only one, if we do zero, we'll just get the only child object attached. Now we get the transform.rotation of the child. We do the same thing that we did last time, where we multiply it by a quaternion.euler, and then we do a new vector. But instead of having 0 dx0, zero, this time we do negative dy0, zero, zero. This way, any change in the vertical axis for our mouse will result in a change of the x-axis for our child object. That's the last step, so go ahead and save, and then let's try it out in Unity. I really like this style of camera because I'm a big fan of the Total War games, and I like the fact that it's very fast-moving and responsive compared to a lot of RTS cameras. It lets you traverse the battlefield very quickly, and also lets you zoom out really far so you can get a great tactical overview of the entire battle. This is my first tutorial, so any feedback is appreciated. Uh, if I went too fast, if I went too slow, if I didn't explain enough things, um, I'd love to know it so that I can improve as I make more of these. So uh, anyways, thank you for watching.